What's going on YouTube? Long time no see. Hope you guys have been doing well. I'm going to be covering Arm Dragon Tomahawk for like the 87th trillionth time, but you guys seem to enjoy it. That's all that matters to me. And it's also been blowing up in popularity recently. A lot of people are taking it to tournaments, covering it in other YouTube videos. So I thought I might as well give you guys the update on the sauce. So I'm doing the same thing everyone else is doing. It's just infinite negates. Uh, you summon some Morg, you equip him with the uh, Union Carrier to have Thunderbird in the Spell Trap Zone. And then you have the IP Mascarena, so if they try and swing over your Thunderbird, you go into Avermax, which they have to swing into, and he always wins every battle. You do all this by summoning the Tomahawk, by summoning Pile, and Pile gets you into Tempest by sending Thunder level 5 to the graveyard as cost. However, what's different about my list than most other people's lists is that my main deck is just so drastically different. There's no adventure cards to be seen here and it's because I don't think the adventure cards are very good in Armed Dragons. You won't be able to use things like Artillery Catapult Turtle, which is a very quick pile Armed Dragon. And Adventure takes up so much deck space, it takes up a discard, it also clogs two of your main monster zones which you really don't want with Galaxy Tomahawk, so you know, sometimes you'll just have to link your Omni Negate away, which is kind of dumb. So to protect my plays, I play Crossout Designator instead. Crossout Designator just negates anything that you have in your deck, and I just play every hand trap in the game that's relevant right now. So 3 Maxi, 3 Ash Blossom, 2 Imperm, 2 Valor, 1 Nibiru, which you can draw into the Nibiru with Maxi. And I just like this so much more than playing a bunch of random bricks for an adventure engine that makes my deck less consistent and makes me discard more than I want to. So it might just be a player preference thing, but I really do believe that Crossout is just straight up better than Adventure for Armed Dragons. The other weird thing I'm doing with this deck is I am only playing one Armed Dragon Flash. I've said it before, I don't think Armed Dragon Flash is a very good card. It loses you a ton of card advantage, it doesn't mesh well when you draw a pile Armed Dragon. So I only play the one, so if I have to use my normal summon for the Tomahawk combo, I can use Flash as a searchable extender just to get an extra body on the board, get IP Mascarena on top of the infinite negates. But I also included Arm Dragon level 10 white, so if I had to start with Flash, I still have this extender to go into. You just banish Arm Dragons in your grave to special summon him. But the coolest part about level 10 white is the fact that he searches for White Veil. White Veil is an absolute dog shit ass cheeks card. I mean, there's literally cheeks in the artwork, so like, you already know it's bad. This card outs back row though, and it's searchable, and more importantly, you can search this for cost and in the graveyard, all that stuff. So you're gonna send seven to grave for cost, which you can do under skill drain, that can be with pile or leveling up your armed dragons, that'll search level 10 white. Level 10 white special summons itself from the hand and searches for white veil from the hand as well. So literally you can do all this under skill drain, and then as long as you destroy monster by battle while this is equipped, you will pop the skill drain along with any other back row that they have. So you just constantly have some kind of answer to back row. Even if it isn't the best, it's just really nice because it's searchable and it doesn't lose the skill drain. And that way we don't have to worry about clogging our deck with back row removal that's just dead against combo decks. Other random techs I have in this deck, uh, I don't really want to play a second Tomahawk anymore. I'm probably going to end up investing in an Appaloosa. I just never end up summoning the second Tomahawk. You can do Appaloosa, Draco Sack, whatever rank 7 you want. There's lots of different options. Options. I highly recommend that you have double link spider because you want to be able to summon nightmares as consistently as possible for going second and they require two monsters with different names so you need to be able to link one of those tokens off. I also really like Heratic Seal because if you're interrupted too much and you just have like a level 3 and a level 7 or something you can at least make this interruption. And also I like the Desperate Doom Eagle because I can put back the uh, DPE in the graveyard into the deck. Now I know I skimmed over a lot of cards so I will have the full deck list in the description below and now I'm going to show you guys some combos. Alright we're on EDO Pro just so I can clearly show you the combo without my opponent interrupting me and you know having the RNG of drawing certain cards so this is a two card combo this is the main combo of the deck Pile Arm Dragon plus Thunder level 7. You can do this with a number of different combinations of cards but this is the most simple way to show it to you guys so what you're going to do is you're going to activate Pile Arm Dragon and you're going to send Thunder level 7 from the hand to the grave as cost. That's going to special summon Pile and trigger Thunder level 7's effect. Thunder level 7 will resolve in Grave and search for Arm Dragon Flash. Uh, what you can also do is if you get Skill Drained here, you can search for level 10 White and send 3 with Pile so you can get level 10 White summoned and search for White Veil. That is a way to out Skill Drain, but assuming the combo is going as planned, we're just going to search for that Arm Dragon Flash. Then we're going to activate the second effect of Pile Arm Dragon to send Thunder level 5 from Dector Gravis cost. 
and that's going to trigger his effect to search for a tempest now tempest is going to add himself to the hand and from here we're going to activate tempest effect to banish the two dragons we sent to the graveyard you'll always have two dragons in the grave don't worry about that that's just how the combos always go because you're either summoning pile or you're leveling up into pile with the thunders effects and then you're going to go into the one and only Galaxy Tomahawk. Now Galaxy Tomahawk is going to be in the extra monster zone. Very important. Don't summon it in the main monster zone. Otherwise you'll lose a lot of monsters on the field. So we're going to go ahead and summon five Battle Eagle tokens. So one token, two token, three token. Wow, this card's fair. Four tokens and five tokens. Next, you're going to want to link into the Harpy Conductor because it's a winged beast, which is required for some Morg. You're going to link the Harpy Conductor with the token, go into some Morg. Then you're going to make a Union Carrier. You're going to activate the Union Carrier effect to equip onto the Samorg with the Mist Valley Thunderbird. That's going to get us our infinite negates right here. And then I'm going to activate Arm Dragon Flash. Now, if you don't have access to the extender, uh, basically what you're going to do is you're going to link the token off into a Link Spider, and instead of the Union Carrier, you're going to have IP Mascarena, so that way you have a Unicorn Bounce and at least one Negate, and then the Samorg will summon the Negate again during the end of the turn. It's better than going for infinite Negates when your opponent can just normal summon and attack over the Thunderbird, but that's why the extender is so important, so you can go into IP Mascarena, because what's going to happen here is during your opponent's turn, which I forgot to summon with uh, Samorg here, ignore that, uh, but basically, during my opponent's turn, when they try and swing over the Thunderbird after I negate something, I can go into IP Mascarena's effect, link off the Union Carrier, and then make an Avermax. Your opponent has to swing at Avermax, and it's going to gain the attack of any special summon monster, so it's going to constantly win those 1v1 battles. Now, if you're going second with this deck, you're still making Tomahawk and doing all those shenanigans, but what you're going to do after summoning Tomahawk's a bit different. What I typically do is go into Harpy Conductor first, and then if I need to go into a Nightmare to pop some things, I can go like Link Spider and then link off one of the tokens in Link Spider for a Nightmare Phoenix or a Cerberus. And then if you want to, you can go IP Mascarena. So the access code that you summon is indestructible by card effects. That's also pretty nice to have. You can also make an Avermax here, depending on the, like, it just depends on the situation, right? Uh, you have to address different boards differently, but this is the typical thing I always go for is just access code, and then pop three cards because I have a Dark, Earth, and Fire attribute in the grave. And then after popping my opponent's cards and destroying their field, I link off the Harpy Conductor and the Axis Code Talker into a Samorg. And then during the end phase, Samorg will summon the Apex Avian. And my opponent's probably only going to have a couple cards left in hand. So one negate that destroys is going to be really, really powerful, hard for them to deal with. And then Samorg's a big enough body to just survive during the end phase and resummon the Apex Avian. I've got a couple of replays for you guys because I know you guys like seeing the deck in action. So this time we're up against something. I, I don't know. They just set one card and pass. Now I think they bricked on a bunch of hand traps and you're going to see that that's true here in a second. I'm going to excavate the top six cards of my deck, search for a starter because Prosperity just makes this bricky deck so much more consistent. I'm going to add the Catapult Turtle to my hand. They're going to chain D Shifter and then they're going to activate the freaking Drone Lockbird. So, you know, the two best hand traps against my deck. Okay, buddy, calm down. I'm going to attribute for the uh, level 5, attack for 1200, set imperm call it a day. I like sitting on the big body with uh, level 5 just in case they're going to do some shenanigans. But no, they set a card and pass. I think they were bricking. I'm going to activate Thunder level 5 and oh my god, I rejoiced when I saw Skill Drain because we absolutely shit on Skill Drain. I'm going to search for Pile because I sent 7 for cost. I'm going to send 7 for cost again, activate Pile, draw a card because, you know, why not? And now I've set myself up for a level 10 white, who I could have searched for with level 7, by the way, so I wasn't just completely lucky by drawing him. And then he's going to add white veil because everything resolves in hand. He sees that white veil is going to pop the skill drain and out that, then I can do my tomahawk play. Plus I have a call by the grave for protection, so yeah, he's just going to scoop it up like he should. So in this duel, it works out, but it's going to showcase why you probably don't want to do infinite negates without IP Mascarena. So let's go ahead and start the duel. I'm going to excavate the top six cards of my deck for Prosperity. He's going to hit it with an Ash Blossom. Now we're going to have to do 
a really, really jank play that I don't like just so I can play through this Ash with no starter. I'm going to use the Tempest to search for Pile Arm Dragon to trigger the 5 to search for 7. We're going to trigger the 7, search for an Arm Dragon level 3. I send 3 to Grave because, like, why not? Um, I can't draw, though, because even if uh, Prosperity gets negated, you just can't draw. And then I'm going to have to discard my entire hand to get another level 7 on the field. We're going to go into Galaxy Tomahawk, activate its effect, summon a bunch of tokens. You already know the deal. And then link into the Harpy Conductor, and right here... You shouldn't go into the uh, Union Carrier, of course I do the Samorg first, but uh, you should be doing IP Mascarena right there uh, rather than the Union Carrier and then linking the token into uh, Link Spider, but I think I had to do it here because I couldn't spin anything back with Unicorn, I had no cards in my hand to discard, so I literally had no other option than to uh, just pray that infinite negates would be enough. So he's going to be playing Sword Soul because like who isn't playing Sword Soul right now? They're going to activate the Tenny Spirit, I'm going to negate that, they're going to chain Max C so they get a couple of draws from my infinite negates. Now that's going to trigger the Mist Valley Thunderbird, summon itself once again, I'm going to negate their second card, easy peasy, summon back the Thunderbird, they get the draw card, they draw into a Sword Soul of Taya, they're going to swing over the Thunderbird just like I feared, they're going to attempt to activate Taya, but luckily I don't think they had any other plays since I negated so much and they got the Taya so late, so I really lucked out here. They're going to set one pass. I get to summon back the Apex Avian during the end phase because, you know, fair and balanced Yu-Gi-Oh. It's my turn. I'm just going to summon back the Tempest and pretty much just swing for game here. So I don't know if I summon anything else. Oh, I equip the uh, pile to some morgue and then, yeah, that's going to be a win. Here's what you should be doing if you aren't able to get the IP Mascarena plus Infinite Negate. So I'm going to normal catapult, discard a card, and get into Pile Arm Dragon. We're just going to do the same Tomahawk combo that we always do. Special Summon Tempest, that's the second level 7, get our Tomahawk, then from here go into Harpy Conductor, then go into some Morgue, but instead of Union Carrier we're doing the smart thing and we're making IP Mascarena, and then we're linking off the last token into Link Spider because now I can just discard my White Veil for a Unicorn Spin, and it's really really gonna help. So. Our opponent's going to start off with Zombie World, I let it resolve because it doesn't affect us that much. I'm going to use my Ash on the Elixir of Black Awakening. I'm going to negate the Foolish Burial because I don't want something crazy in there, like a, a Blow Up Plume or something like that. I, I just don't want anything to hit the Graveyard in general, so I'm just going to negate that with Apex Avian. And then lastly, they're going to summon Unizombie, and I know that's like kind of their last line of play because zombies are pretty fragile. So I'm just going to activate IP Mascarena, link off the Link Spider, and go into Nightmare Unicorn. Now, if I didn't have IP Mascarena and I just went for Infinite Negates, they could swing over Thunderbird with the Unizombie. So this was a really good, smart play. Uh, just shuffle it back and then summon the Apex Avian during the end phase. Afterwards, we're going to draw, we're going to special summon the Tempest back onto the field, and yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much game, so we just win. Now, I know I'm not playing against the most competitive deck in existence, but uh, it did showcase pretty well like what you do going second, so I felt like including this replay in this video. Um, they're playing Blue Eyes. I'm going to max C them. They're going to chain Call By because everyone always has the max C negate, I swear. They're going to special summon the Blue Eyes, and every deck is just a Halk engine at this point. <laughs> That's just how broken this card is. They're going to go into the White Stone, link it off for Link Kribo, and then during the end phase, summon a bunch of Blue Eyes cards. This one adds the Ritual. This one is going to... Wait, it adds both the Ritual and the Ritual Monster. And then they're going to summon, I think, two Vanillas off the two White Stones, because that's not once per turn. And uh, it's actually kind of cool what this guy does with this deck, but they definitely could have made a better board without TBH. Uh, but we're going to Normal Summon... The Catapult Turtle, they're going to go into Formula Synchron. Formula Synchron is going to activate and then summon a Baron de Fleur. And I think draw, doesn't it draw a card? I swear it draws a card. Yeah, it draws a card. I'm going to activate Catapult, go into level 5, discard 7, go into Pile Arm Dragon, 7 effect, search white. And then I'm going to use 7 to send 3, draw a card. Also just fuel my uh, grave for white. He's going to pop and negate the pile, which I'm totally fine with. I'm going to activate my second pile and summon the uh, Tempest, or search the Tempest. Now we're going to summon the Tempest, go into Galaxy Tomahawk. And then Tomahawk is going to poop out his little friends, his little tokens. Again, fair and balanced Yu-Gi-Oh, am I right? And then we go into the Harpy Conductor. Then we go into, I think, a Link Spider. 
and then a Nightmare Cerberus so we can pop something. I discard the Pot of Prosperity to get rid of uh, the Return of the Dragon Lords, basically, is what I baited out. And then I go into a Nightmare Phoenix. Now, it would have actually been smarter to probably go into uh, IP Mascarena because I didn't realize I was going to sit on Axis Code since I have the level 10 white in my hand. So I'm going to use his effect to pop one of his uh, cards, Barone and Blue Eyes. And then I'm going to special summon the level 10 white from my hand because I want to get rid of all of his monsters. We add the white veil, it doesn't really matter, there's no back row here. He's going to activate Link Krebo, that's fine, because I'm just going to pop his uh, blue eyes, what is this, Abyss Dragon. And then we're going to link off the white and uh, the harpy to get into some morgue and make an Omni Negate. So we have pretty much a Towers and an Omni Negate. He's going to activate Fusion Destiny, which means he will be able to activate his ritual spell, but I'd much rather deal with a Chaos Max than a DPE, let's be real. Uh, so he's gonna do a lot of stuff before doing that though. He's gonna add the uh, Blue Eyes Alternative White Dragon. Uh, he's gonna Ritual into the Chaos Max. I feel like, uh, couldn't have he added the... Maybe he doesn't have a Blue Eyes in hand to summon the Alternative with, but I felt like he could have popped something here, but he didn't. I get to summon back the Apex Avian. I lose my access code, big whoop. And then I'm gonna go into another Pile Arm Dragon. We're gonna summon the Tempest, and then I think we use Pile's effect to pitch a seven, boosting the Miss Valley Apex Baby. I don't know why I said the full name. I'm tongue twisting myself. Uh, then we're gonna go Union Carrier because I want to go even more overkill. Put the infinite negate so I can swing over him, and then have all of the negates in the world for the follow-up. Lastly, I just want to showcase the hand traps and why I like them more than the Adventure Engine for going seconds. They're just it's hand traps, what is there to say? I'm gonna affect Valor the Doki Doki because I wanna bait out a called by, but he doesn't even have it. I'm gonna use the Max C, chain onto the Destrudo, draw a card. He's gonna go into Halka Fibrax, guess what? Draw a card. He's gonna summon a Tuner, guess what? Draw a card. Union Carrier, draw a card. And then uh, activate the Olean. Go into Link Spider, activate Union Carrier. I'm just gonna go ahead and imperm that. And then uh, I'm pretty sure he just rage quits here. I think that's what happens, right? Yeah. And that's Arm Dragon Tomahawk. The deck is honestly really, really good. Definitely worth the URSR investment. And uh, yeah, if you're looking for something spicy and competitive to pick up, this is definitely the deck. Chaz it up. Leave a like and subscribe, yada, yada, yada. I'm out of here. TCG profile next week. Peace.